So today we're still buffing a tower that's been hotly requested, and I figure it will also be interesting to see how long it can survive, because uh, there's a lot of potential to wait. It's the bottom path druid, the avatar of wrath. Of course, before that, I think it's also a good idea to see how long the lower tiers of that path can survive. So first off, we're starting with an avatar of wrath without a populist army, just to see how we do, and just take a look on round 96 here. We don't even have full ultra snack boost on it yet, but it's already looking pretty darn strong, I would say. Now, I should mention that I haven't even done the life loss yet for the Druid of Wrath. So, uh, in essence, we're missing still uh, another half its power. We could get up to, I think, 90% more attack speed because the uh, Heart of Vengeance was changed a long time ago. So that you start with 10% more attack speed with a Tier 2 without losing lives, which you can cap up to 100%. So, that, because of that, I've brought Azalea along so I could lose lives without having to uh, calculate losing a Ceramic. That being said, you saw how easy round 100 was. I think it lasts a pretty long time. If I recall, I think the 2 to 0 Druid, I tried this super buff test a long time ago with it. That only got to round 103. So I think we're already going to get past that thanks to the uh, insane attack speed with the Druid of Wrath. 015 is almost always going to be the best cross path for Avatar Wrath, but I'm not entirely sure if that's the case for the Druid of Wrath, but I want to believe so because again, this thing gives more thorns versus lightning, which I feel like doesn't perform as well when you give max buffs to it versus an extra thorn. Those one damage, one pierce thorns go a very long way in getting it to be this strong. But yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty ridiculous for a tower that costs 1.5k. This is the furthest I've seen balloons go so far, but it's not even halfway in the track. I think I'll just drop a zeal in the corner just to, to get ready to use the totem to lose lives. Actually, hold that thought. No Azili yet because uh, we're still holding very strong even on 119 here. You see the F-bat damage? It's like thousands per second, which is why, again, Lightning is not as good as Extra Thorn. Single target's insane. And yeah, it's an easy 119. Anybody surprised about this result so far? I think we finally reached a round where uh, the Druid might fall. 131 has a lot of FZMGs. Oh wow, we almost l naturally lost lives, but no, we still retain full lives with Man Shield. It's honestly kind of crazy to think that a max boosted 013 can perform better than... Uh, uh, what towers I tried so far? Well, I tried all the heroes already. This would already, I think, be in the upper echelon tier of max buff heroes, if it was one. We're talking about level 20 heroes. And it, at that, we're actually very close to the uh, how far the Dark Paragon went for degree 1. If you guys want to put any perspective on that, because that's pretty absurd. Anyways, we accidentally lost lives on round uh, 135, so I guess I don't need Azealia anymore. We've already... Instantly jumped. I was kind of hoping to do a slow progression of attack speed, like, you know, drain 10 lives every round to see the uh, slow power increase, but I guess we'll just jump all the way. And in fact, it's very noticeable as you can see how fast those darts are shooting out. Absolutely nutty. And if that's probably enough to beat an F-bet at 140, if it can take care of 138 first, which it does, passes the test. 130 is generally a tough round that a lot of the max buff towers die to, so yeah. A good test to see there how long it'll survive. And yeah, at this point, let me just slow down here to show you how much DPS we're getting out of this druid. I would say about 3,000 per second. Now, I do know I have two uh, hero buffs on this thing. Uh, the Open buff and the Azili buff. That's from the uh, Gold Village mod, which there's not really much I can do. But that's it. I don't think the Open buff does much anyway. It's not from a bit of extra range and pierce, which we feel I feel like I have almost infinite pierce, so it's pretty negligible. That said, round 140. Taken care of, folks. Yeah, I think finally we've reached the power cap for this guy. Only took to 145. Jeez. Yeah, I got no words for how long this thing survived, but that's that just uh, sets me up for, uh, I guess, how long the later just will survive. So now the populace doesn't really give any extra damage with just one Drew in the field. So now I'm going to test a max buffed army. And now this, folks, is 5014 Druids added. I know these aren't uh, max buffed at all. They don't have overclock stacks. They don't have uh, what do you call the arms buff on some of them. This one's missing Golden Village. But this is mainly just to buff the, the main guy, all right? It's not to say the other ones won't be doing any damage. But yeah, this is uh, how much extra attack speed? I think it's 15% per Druid. I don't know if it's additive or multiplicative. But if it is additive, then that's an extra 75% attack speed. Which should last us... Last us quite a long while. Okay, not gonna lie, I actually do kind of feel bad for this druid, so I'm gonna replace my fifth one over here instead. You saw the pops pale in comparison to 
Uh, even the unoverclocked pop bust over here. That's what no true Sun God buff does to an MF. Either way, looking strong in the 150s. Near in the 150s. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this in the max buff videos before, or if I did, it was probably a while ago, but the main premise of these max buff videos is generally to see how long, uh, how good these towers are in like a late game setting, because, you know, hypothetically, you will be having the true Sun God buff. You'll be having all these buffs, overclock, homeland, and all that. So, uh, for anyone who does do late game runs, I think it's a good gauge to see which towers you want to prioritize, depending on, well, how well it does in this test. So, like, even though Paragons are generally the strongest, they actually may not be as good as uh, some other just plain tier 5 towers in the late game, just because of how many buffs you can give them, and the fact that you can't buff Paragons, aside from just giving damage leakers or damage increasers like Super Riddle or Curve Moab. The reason why they're not used in these tests, though, is because uh, some of their effects kind of uh, hinder or get in the way of what we want to see. So, like, the Curve Moab stun, for example. Sometimes Super Riddle can freeze balloons. Uh, same with Blue Storm. Bluing balloons slowing down. It's good to see the damage of towers uh, without anything else involved uh, in doing the damage or doing utility. But yeah, so far it's looking like you definitely want to put or use a mini Druid Wrath army for your late game runs. 165. We're already getting near a uh, degree 100 Paragon territory with how long these things are surviving. Anyways, perhaps now we might be reaching around where uh, the Poplus army fails. I think it probably stretched out another round or two though because I didn't do any targeting for these Druids. As in, putting them strong should help us. And yeah, this is the difference when I put the uh, one Druid on strong. We are now able to beat 167. Piece of cake. But yeah, when I said I could squeeze out a couple more rounds out of the uh, uh, Poplist army, I meant quite a few, actually. 172, and uh, might still be able to beat this round. Uh, this is going to be a close one, I would bet. BFBs. Nice. Ooh, DDT's here. There's a lot of them. Nothing we can do, but we leave it on first. Yeah, nah, that's just too many DTs, so we'll call it there for the Poplist army. Pretty, pretty massive. And now expect to destroy every round of the Avatar Wrath. This thing gains insane damage with this uh, with this many balloons on the screen with late game. Yeah, you got up to plus 30 with the base attack. But when you max buff it, look how many 30 plus damage shots we have. Absolutely nutty amount. Now we can see why this was hotly requested. And uh, yeah, surprised it took me this long to, you know, eventually try this one out. Because it was no surprise. Just, uh... Looking at crunching the numbers, even in your head, you could tell this thing would do really good. Again, it's easy to tell what does better max buff when you just count number of projectiles. That's what we're looking at, and attack speed. That's why the Century Champion, if you remember, got to past 200 in this test. And I got no no hesitation this thing will get anywhere uh, less than 200. Like, this is probably one of the most satisfying towers I've seen. Super buffed. In fact, you can even see uh, sometimes it changing the color of its projectile, depending on the amount of balloons on screen. Like, when the round starts, it's going to be pretty dull colored, since uh, it's not very... Not many RB on screen, you see there? Pretty dark, like, Bob Lusts. But the moment that shows up, instantly max power. Actually, while we're still holding strong, I got rid of all the other Bob Lusts, just to see uh, I could also do a further test of how long an un Bob Lust buff Avatar Ruffin 5. And even on 188 here, you can see... It has no problem surviving on its own. Also, I have no idea why it still says one popless buff, because I'm pretty sure you can't buff itself, but... Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But you see, if I buy another one, it still says one. Do I finally get two? Yes, I do. So that's kind of strange. I think it's probably a bug from having... from selling them or something. Either way, it shouldn't make that much of a difference. Or it could just be visual. This could still make it to 200, it seems like, alone. Honestly, the damage of this guy is just nasty. If I just put on strong for a second... You can see just how quickly the uh, bads die. Like, you see this? Oh my god. <laughs> I don't think round 200 even stands a chance against the Avatar Wrath folks. Again, I thought it would be a breeze going through it, but that was with the 5 pop buzz. I didn't think even without it, it would be able to hold this strong. Funny enough, the hardest part seems to be the end of the round, where there's no more balloons left, and this thing has, you know, the minimal damage. But yeah, again, just look at this, guys. I'm going to pop the F-bad here. I'm going to put it on strong, just to whittle down that, that bad faster. And folks, that's how you beat uh, 198, the easiest way. 
And now, folks, the moment you've been waiting for. Round 200. How much DPS are we getting per second on this guy? Well, that's way more than 10,000 per second. I'm thinking, like, uh, 20,000? Probably 25,000 DPS. And yeah, here's the homeland. I feel like it's up to 30,000. Absolutely nutty. If you saw the recent Ledge of the Night buff one I did, I think that one was only 10,000. So you could just imagine that. 40k tower, out DPSing, something at 200k. But that's not really a surprise, again. Because we already know this thing is best when there's the most points on screen. But honestly, I'm just, uh, yeah, no, no more words to say after this. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon. But we actually died to the uh, supposedly easiest part of this challenge, which is that last blue. And perhaps here's what I'll do. Instead of targeting the zoom, geez, I'll put this thing on last. Focus the F fad down earlier. Think anything changes? Well, take a look here. Oh my god, it might still die. Okay, we lost 50 lives that time. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's crazy. That actually means this may not survive, uh... Well, at least the one alone may not survive as long as you think. I think once you add the Poplus, though, we, add, we have so much extra weak damage, you know? So that will aid in you know, the toughest part, which is the end of end of the balloons, end of the round. Uh, perhaps 204 here? Oh, uh, I think we could probably beat that round without it. But just for the sake of speeding things up, we'll go ahead and do the max buff. Plus, this is more realistic. No one's ever going to run a pop lust or an Avatar Wrath of a pop lust army late game, right? So here we go. Here's five. And we'll see the difference now. Should be a substantial difference for beating the inside tier, right? Yes, sirree. Five pop lust add up. But yeah, with that, we have officially surpassed uh, the highest round uh, with max buff towers uh, for non-Paragon. So uh, this is King, folks. Looks like if you've got your Paragons ready, you want to go for the Avatar Wrath next. But yeah, for these rounds, targeting is pretty much of the utmost importance. Because the only reason we're surviving this long is because of the single target damage. So pretty much at all points, should be targeting strong as I'm first. If wounds are leaking. I think this is the first round in a while where we have, we've had two f pads, Pretty spaced apart. So this could be a tough one. Like, even if I beat the second f pad here, which it's going to be tight. There's still three bads after that. So yeah, good luck. Back to first here for a bit. Leave it on first for the zoom Gs or GT is a... Gotta be in strong now. And pray we can beat the Zoom Gs uh, on the last bend. Come on. Uh, not quite. Not quite enough. We'll give it one more go here. But it seems like this could be it. Yep. Think this is the end of the road, folks. I have it on first this time for a bit longer. But even then, two bads remaining. I don't think there's enough damage. If there is, oh my god. But nah. <laughs> it's pretty close, though. But that's gonna be it. 219 it smashes the record for the longest attack to five. So, uh, yeah. I'm not surprised it's number one, but I am surprised that it's number one by a long shot. That's all I have to say. Peace.